What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Thursday morning to you and welcome to this devotional series. My friend Shane Willard is still with me all week long. We got a week with Willard. Um, pause. If you're just if you're some reason catching up on Thursday, you you missed the mark. Okay, so pause, go back to Monday, watch the whole thing. Because we're in the book of Revelation. It's an unbelievably like interesting, dynamic, but yeah, complicated sometimes. Fair. And I think hmm. some of the things that make it complicated is there's tons of like symbolism. Clearly, yeah. there's a lion, there's a lamb, there's all kinds of things, but like there's a beast. Um, there's obviously like, there's a whore. I think there's a horse. There's, there's a, a whore riding a horse. Right. Which you got to be honest. That's frankly a terrifying image. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but but I know some people get hung up on, okay, well, what is the third horn on the... I mean, like, they... So so if you could unpack maybe some of the symbolism found in Revelation. Well, yeah, we definitely could unpack three. So, and, and it's rooted in something historical as well as something that should speak to our today. So... Um, so let's talk about the whore on a horse, because that's like somebody somebody asked me one time. Um, so you don't think the Book of Revelation is meant to be interpreted literally? And I'm like, do you think there's a literal whore on a horse <laughs> going to come down from the sky? the sky? How frightening is that? You imagine that some, you know, like I mean, that just doesn't. I don't even I, know. What, I, I don't want to know what that looks know, like. Come on, I, I, like what? So, um, but th- that one's easy to understand because so. The Roman Emperor Domitian, who was the emperor when Revelation was written, the guy that put John on the Isle of Patmos, um, he said that he was God. Now, that was not uncommon. They all said they were God in flesh. Matter of fact, the Roman historian Virgil said about Caesar Augustus that in Caesar Augustus was the fullness of God incarnate and no other name on earth by which men can be saved other than the name of Caesar Augustus. That sounds like familiar language. Sounds like the Christmas story. So, you know, and they changed New Year's Day. Uh, to coincide with Caesar Augustus' birth because uh, the end of his 12-day celebration's birth. That's why New Year's Day is January 1st, when it doesn't coincide with anything, solar, lunar, nothing. It was just the end of the 12-day celebration of Caesar Augustus' birth, birth, right? So he said he was God, but he was a bit of a narcissist like all of them. He said, I- I'm not just full of one God. I'm full of two. So his male energy was the god Jupiter, the god of war, valor, courage. Rome would never lose a battle while he was in charge because of Jupiter. But the female goddess was Roma, like Rome, Mm -hmm. Roma. And of course, to get news from Spain to India, you got to put it on coins. There was no printing press. There was no internet. There was no electricity. So the way they got news from Spain to India is they put it, they minted it on coins. Because back then, if you lived in a rural area, you might hear rumors of wars and rumors of wars and all of this, and you didn't know what was real news and what was fake news. Now, we're way past that now, but they, they had to wonder, right? <laughs> we're way past fake news? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, like we're, we're way past having to wonder about what's real and what's fake. Back then, they really had to wonder, right? Yeah. And so the Roman Empire said, if you want to know if the message is really from us, it'll be on your money because we control the minting of the right. money. So, so on Domitian's coin with Roma on the back, so he was on the head, and Roma was on the tail. And, uh, and it's this woman riding a horse, holding the scales of justice, coming into Rome, the city of seven hills. So when John says, oh, I saw a great whore descending on a horse to the city of seven hills. No one was wondering what that was about. This is what he's saying is, is the spirit behind Rome claims to be one of justice and purity. But it's the opposite of that. She's not chaste. She's not pure. She's actually so much the opposite of that. She's a whore on a horse. So, so let me this get this like... straight. This is, this is John saying, you know, the spirit of Roma that you claim lives within you. That is supposed to bring justice and purity and chastity. And... It's a lie because yeah. that's not a real woman. That's, that's a whore. That's pretty confrontational. Yeah, it and... sounds like that could get you thrown onto an island or boiled to death. Yeah, we, we need to get you out of here yeah. because he's confronting, hey, if that's true, look at what it produces. That doesn't promise what it delivers. Same with beast. Like the beast was just a common nickname the Jews gave any oppressor. You see it in Babylon. Um, You see it. You see it in the empires that oppressed. They would come up with these beasts. So, so Domitian was called the beast who comes from land and sea because um, right there in the central marketplace was this giant statue of Domitian. So, no matter where you came from land or by sea, he was the first thing you saw. It's called the beast who comes from land and sea. And incidentally, he made a rule, just another good symbol. He made a rule that um, before you could buy and sell in the Agora, that was the central marketplace, 
you had to first give him an offering. Now, the problem is how do you police that? So people come from China, India, France, whatever, you buy, sell, trade. So what they would do is he built four churches around the Agora to his own honor. And then every morning they'd sacrifice a cow or a bull and they'd burn the cow or the bull after it was killed and it would descend into ashes, called the ashes of the red heifer. Then they would take the ashes of the sacrifice to Caesar, mix it with this paste. And when you gave your offering, they would, they would mark you in your forehand or on your forehead. And that would tell the managers of the Agora, these people have paid their homage to Caesar. They can now buy and sell. So he was saying Caesar is a beast. Yes. Who makes people take his marks. Who takes a, it was, is See, there a 666 component to this? Or, or, yeah. or where does the 666 come from? Well, 666 is a way of saying um, evil, 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 or man, man, man. Like he's claiming to be God, but he's a man. In like Hebrew numerology, yeah, the yeah, number yeah. six. Yeah, well, like, like so Solomon, it says that he displeased God because he collected 666 chariots, 666 gold, 666 silver, 666 horses, 666 weapons. So it wasn't like, a literal 666. Obviously nobody's going one, two, three. It's, it's this, it was this Hebrew way of saying, ah. You built an army unto your own self. Correct. Wow. Yeah. You're claiming to be God, but this is how men act. If God was actually a man, they wouldn't be raping, oppressing, and pillaging 99% of the world to enrich the 1%. They'd be lifting the lowly to love the elite. You suck. You are not delivering what you promise. And so all these images sort of um, would have been common in the day. A one world government with one world leader who was using one world currency to oppress people who wouldn't call him God. And the question the book of Revelation is asking is, is um, how far are you willing to go um, to use your power, energy, and resources to uplift the world? Um, or are you only concerned about yourself? So the command in Revelation to not take the mark of the beast was a command to really what then? To, uh, to withstand the pressure to call someone else God at the expense of your own economic freedom. It was, if it means you have to buy things from black markets for a little while, persist because um, we don't want to get into giving a testimony to the world that someone else is God. Fascinating. So for us to take these images and say, okay, this is Rome, this is the beast, this is Caesar, this is a mark, mm -hmm. and it's saying we're not going to give in to the ways of Rome, the mm -hmm. ways of evil, the yeah. ways of oppression. We're yeah. actually going to stand and fight yeah. against that. Again, a not, call with, not with swords, but with, with nonviolent, peaceful... Right, to stand against it by saying a call to a different way of living, a yes. way in which actually brings life to everybody. To earth. That's yeah. right. I love it. All right, we got... We got one more day. Okay. Get back in here tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. I love you. God bless. Yeah.